Testing, testing, testing. testing. Are we streaming, you guys? I'm calling it right now. Jeff, I'm in the same key as you. If you blew that. Keep cycling in. Hope everyone's doing good out there. Can't wait to hear the word from Jeff. Everyone in the internet land ready to worship today. It feels sweet in here. <laughs> you guys get to see all of it raw. We're not any different. <laughs> yeah, we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Those of you who are on the stream world, streaming us. Let's just pray real quick, yeah. <laughs> Father, we just invite your spirit of worship right now cast aside agenda of man. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Here we go. Now, they thought we were live two minutes ago, but now we're really live. <laughs> so when I asked the Lord what to blow the shofar over this evening, I said, there's a coming great awakening. Blow it over the awakening of my people, that the scales would fall from their eyes and out of their ears that they would hear the truth and that the truth would set them free. starts with us, starts right here, we're not waiting any longer, we're not waiting any longer, 
We're not waiting any longer It starts with me I'm not waiting any longer I'm not waiting any longer Lord, start with me I'm not waiting any longer Come start with me I'm not waiting any longer Lord, start with me Oh, come blow on the coals Come water the dry land waiting any longer oh we're not waiting any longer come start with me i'm not waiting any longer come start with me i'm not waiting any longer come start with me i'm not waiting any longer said that you would pour your spirit out on all flesh you said that you would fall on sons and daughters so come In my bones, you're about to move. I feel it in the wind, you're about to ride in. You said that you would pour your spirit out. You said that you would fall on sons and daughters. Yes, you would. So, like the rain, come gent, just in love. Your glory rushing like a flood We are fixed on this one thing To know your goodness and see your glory Lord, we're transformed by this one thing To know your presence 
and see your beauty. See your beauty. I'm not waiting any long. Come start with me. Come start with me. Ah. Oh, I can see it now. You sound of heaven Oh, you said that if we ask we'll receive So we are asking for the greater measure Yes, we are Oh, I can see it now Your kingdom come Oh, I can hear it now The sound of heaven You said that if we in love and let your glory rush in like a flood cause we are based on this one thing to know your goodness and see your glory for oh, we transform by this one thing to know your presence See your beauty, oh, we are fixed on this one thing to know your goodness and see your glory. We transform by this one thing to know your presence and see your beauty. Yes, Lord, Spirit, move. 
All right, let's go to that bridge. Come and blow on through. Oh, spirit move. We're crying out. We're crying out. We're not waiting anymore. More than gold. More than fame. More than praises of any man We want you, Lord We want your presence More than gold and more than fame More than praises of any man We want you, Lord ha! More than gold, more than fame More than praises of any man We want you, Lord want your presence more than gold more than fame more than praises of any man we want you
presence. We want your presence. We want your presence. Nothing else. Nothing else. of any man we want you lord we want your presence more than gold more than fame more than praises of any man we want you lord
Here in your presence I'll stay Here in your presence is where I was meant to be all along Here in your presence Lord I'll stay Here in your presence That's where I'm meant to be Just to be with you Just to be with you Just to be made for you come on can we just soak that in for a minute made to be with you you delight in me and I in you your love I 
find peace makes me the secret place right here right now I'm casting off all other agendas I don't need another word 
I don't need another song, just your presence. <laughs> just to be with you. I to be with us and he wants to break the shame of coming and feeling like we're empty before him that's all we need to do <laughs> he just says I just want to be with you let his words wash over you now just to be with you 
my child, my love. You don't need to do anything just to be with you. It's all I ask just to be with you. That's the heart cry of a father just to be with his children. Just to be with you, my child, my love, and just to be with you. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us, how he loves us so. <laughs> and oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us, how he loves us so. He loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us. <laughs> he loves us, oh, how he loves us. Sing it to him, how I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love not just what you do, but who you are, Lord. Oh, I love you. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love you. One more time. I love you. Oh, how. everyone stand to our feet right now we're in the presence of God and his holy angels right now I believe he wants to respond to our worship tonight as we were worshiping when it's interesting when Leah began to sing I saw angels down big giant angels standing around the inside of this room and they all had trumpets and I'm trying to think, I, I felt like that God wanted to heal. And I said, are there healing angels? And they said, no, we're here to blow the trumpet because the Lord is in this place. And it tells us in Luke chapter 5 that one day Jesus was in a house. And he was preaching and there were so many people in and around the house that you couldn't get in the door of the house. And there were four men and they were carrying a friend of theirs who was paralyzed and they came up, and you would have thought they would have given up but they, because they couldn't get in. But they said, no, we came to bring our friend to Jesus. And so it says they climbed up on the roof of that house, and they made a hole in the roof. Now, there's some indication this was Jesus' house. <laughs> Can you imagine tearing a hole in Jesus' house? <laughs> and uh, they made a hole. It was a hole. It wasn't a little hole. It was a big enough hole to lower 
a man on a stretcher down through that hole. And it says as they lowered that man down through uh, that hole in the roof, it says, Jesus looked up. And it says, now that must it says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal. Now, interesting thing, there were all kinds of people, but nobody was getting healed. But it said the power of the Lord, because Jesus was in the house, was present to heal. But four guys got up on the roof, made a hole in the roof, lowered their friend down in front of Jesus. Jesus looked at the man. He said, son, your sins are forgiven you. Of course, there were several of the religious leaders there. They all sucked air. (gasps) Who can forgive sin but God? Well, Jesus is God, and he can forgive sin. And he said, what does it matter if I say your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk? But that you might know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, I say to you, take up your bed and walk. And the Bible says, and the man got up, and everybody was really blown away. And I just sensed tonight, those of you that are watching by internet, that if you'll do some kind of spiritual act right now, there's healing in the house. God's presence is here to heal. If you're here tonight in this auditorium, and you need a healing in your body, I think it'd be a good idea if you got out of your seat and just kind of come and stand here. I just have a sense that as you come like the four guys, it says Jesus saw their faith and healed the man. And so I want to encourage you, just get out of your seat right now. This is a holy moment. The angels are blowing trumpets. Jesus is in the house. And God's presence is here to heal tonight. So if you need a healing in your body, I just think some of you are getting healed on the way. As you came, just like the four guys that brought their friend. And Jesus, the Bible says, and Jesus looked up and saw their faith and healed their friend. Well, you know what? There's a lot of people who have faith here tonight. I have faith for your healing. Because I believe that Jesus already bore your sickness and your disease upon his body. The Bible says, by his stripes, you were healed. Amen. Amen. If you're standing next to somebody, just put a hand on their shoulder just right now, and we're going to release healing. You know, the Bible says that if you have Jesus in you, you got the healer in you. And I believe there's a presence of the Lord here with us tonight. It's coming out of your innermost being right now. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that the healer is in the house, that the power of the Lord is present to heal now in Jesus' name. I want you to be and declare, I'm healed now in the name of Jesus. I'm healed now in the name of Jesus. I'm healed now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. I didn't do anything to get it other than to believe and act on my faith. And I receive healing now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, you know what? If you were really getting healed, you'd probably act like you're really happy. The Bible says, when the man at the gate, beautiful God healed, says he went walking and leaping and praising God. Now I want you to check yourself out. See if those symptoms are gone right now in the name of Jesus. I believe they are. It's not about me. It's about him. It's about his presence. It's about the finished work of the cross. It's about Jesus taking our sickness and our disease upon himself that we might be made whole. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals us. And Lord, we thank you for it. Come on, I want to thank him for healing us. Thank him for healing us. Thank him for healing us. Thank you. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen, we're in a new decade. We're in a new season. The power of the Lord is on America right now and here on the Central Coast, and he is present to heal in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you give God some praise for that right now? Come on. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Amen. And some of you, if you didn't get healed on the way up, you're going to get healed on the way out. Come on. For the ten lepers came one day, and Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. It says, as they went, they were all healed. Come on, somebody. Amen. All right. Well, you may be seated. God bless you. My name is Fred Crump. I got, they call me Pastor Fred. I haven't been able to shake that. Pastor Fred. <clears throat> Makes my grandkids confused. Like, are you, who are you? 
And uh, I want to pray, and then I want to jump right in, and uh, I want to share with you something that God spoke to me a long time ago. Uh, I asked God, I said, God, there's several years ago, I said, God, what can I tell your people, or how can I help your people to have victory in their lives? How can I help them fulfill their purpose, their calling, their destiny? Lord, show me something. Give me something that I could give them that really will make a difference in their lives. So I want to pray, and then I'll tell you what he told me. Well, that's next week. But anyhow, I'm just kidding. All right. Let's pray, and let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. You see, I'm not the teacher, but the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And if you're a believer, you have the witness of the Holy Spirit in you right now. And the Bible says you have an anointing, and that anointing will teach you. And you're going to walk out of here tonight. with You're going to be armed and dangerous. Come on, somebody. And so, Lord, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your presence. Oh, wow, so good tonight. We love to worship you, praise you. We thank you, Lord, that, there's, that we're entering into a new decade, a new season, a new era of you once again doing amazing things that we do not even know of yet. But, God, we pray tonight. Lord, I pray let my words be spirit and life to those that hear. Lord, let us mix spiritual things thoughts and spiritual words together tonight. And I thank you that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish what you've sent it to do. It's not our words, but it's your words. And your words never fail. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Well, what God told me when I asked him, uh, I said, what, what can I say to your people that will help them? And he's just, he said to me, Tell them to stay full. Tell them, tell them to stay full. And, uh, and so I thought, is that it? <laughs> That's the big message? Tell them to stay full? And so I, it kind of spurred me on. Sometimes God will just give you one word or a sentence or something, and it's actually a lead-in for you to study out that word. And so I began to look through the whole Bible and look for every place where it said, be filled be full, filled up, full, all those words. And I discovered something pretty amazing as I began to do that. I discovered a spiritual law in the Bible. And we'll put it on the screen here. It's called the law of displacement. Everybody say displacement. Well, what's that? The law of displacement. Well, displacement, look at the definition here of displacement. Let's go to the next slide there. Displace, it means to move physically out of position, like a floating object displaces water. How many of you have ever found out that if you fill the tub up all the way and then you put something in it, it overflows, right? Because the water is being displaced. Displacement, the act or process of displacing, the state of being displaced. And so I, I saw this spiritual law, and tonight I want to just give you the basic principles. And I, you know what? I just have a, 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 a sense you're going to get this. You know why? Because it's really simple. It'll be easy to understand. So here's the first thing I discovered. Number one, I discovered, let's put it on the screen, that your life is filled with something. That there is no such thing as an empty life. Your life is filled with something. It's either filled with good things or it's filled with negative things. It can be filled with fear. It can be filled with faith. It can be filled with something. But you are, you are not an empty person. You're filled with something. Uh, Jesus spoke. In fact, in my study of this, I found out that there are more, many more negative scriptures talking about people being filled with negative things than it was positive things that they were filled with. Uh, Jesus spoke about the Pharisees in Matthew 23. Uh, he said this. He said, uh, uh, he's looking at the Pharisees. He says, for you are whitewashed tombs, which indeed, indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside you're full of dead, men bo dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. 
Paul writes in Romans chapter 1, he says, being filled, he's talking about the people of the world, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers or, or gossips. But then it speaks about a man in the book of Acts named Stephen. And it says about Stephen, it says that he was a man full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. How many would like that to be your life? I want to be a man. Well, I want to be a woman. No, I can't be a woman. Okay. I want everyone here to be a man or woman who is full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. So your life is filled with something. I have another title for this message. It's called, You're Full of It. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, you're full of it. <laughs> All right. Turn to the other side and say, you're full of it too. Come on. And so number one, everybody's life is filled with something. Here's number two. What you are filled with overflows out of your life and out of your mouth. One of the ways that you can discover what your life is filled with is simply to look at the outcome of your life. What's going on around my life? Or even better, listen to the words that you say on a regular basis. Because Jesus said this, he said, a man speaks out of that which fills his heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. King David wrote in Psalms 45, he said, my heart is overflowing with a good theme. I recite my composition concerning the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Amen. And so, you know what? Yes, we're all full of something. And what you're full of, number two, overflows out of your life and out of your mouth. Here's the third point. And that is, you determine what your life is filled with. It's not your mama. It's not your Aunt Mary. It's not society. It's not your environment. It's not the government. Amen. It's not that husband or wife. You determine what your life is filled with. That's a powerful thing. In other words, you have the choice of what your life's going to be filled with. When I discovered that, that was good news for me. I realized I could determine what I was going to have my life filled with. Amen. And so you determine what your life filled with. In Romans chapter 6, Paul writes, it says, don't let sin, Paul writes and says this, don't let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lust. And do not present your members as instruments in unrighteousness to sin, uh, of unrighteous to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Look at this scripture in Ephesians chapter 5. Here's what it says. It says, don't be what? Don't be drunk with wine because it'll ruin your life. How many figured that out yet? Oh, I won't, don't hold up your hand. Okay. I see that hand. No. Don't be drunk with wine because it'll ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms like we did tonight and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your hearts. Real interesting, I was preaching this message years ago in a great church up in the Sacramento area. And there, at that time, their church met in a, in a big, it used to be a grocery store. It was a pretty, now the church is like multiple thousands of people. Back then, there were a couple thousand people in the church. And right across the parking lot was a bar. And, uh, and, and so I'm talking to them on Sunday morning. I said, you had a choice this morning. You could have went to the bar or you came to church. You came to the right place. Come on. And so your life, you determine what your life's going to be filled with. Here's the fourth point. What you're filled with will determine the kind of life that you live. So here's the good news. If you don't like the way your life's going, you can change it. Amen. Because you can, uh, that, because what you're filled with will determine the kind of life that you will live. John 10, 10, Jesus said this. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you might have and enjoy life to the full till it overflows. How many of you like that part of the verse? 
So we all have experienced the thief, but I got good news for you. God has a life and life more abundantly. The words there in, uh, in the Greek means a life that is super abundant in quantity, superior in quality to normal natural life. Jesus came. One day I was in my house. I was all depressed and I did one of those point and shoots and I had my Bible and I let my Bible fall open and I put my finger down and I opened my eyes and it was on John 10.10, 10, this verse of scripture. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. At that point in my life, my life was way more steal, kill, and destroy than life more, than, life more abundantly. And I looked up and I said, God, if this is life more abundantly, you can have it. And, God, and Jesus spoke to me right then. He said, it's not that you want to have abundant life. I died expecting you to have abundant life. I said, okay, bring it on. Come on, somebody. And so Jesus didn't come and die on the cross for you to live a normal, natural life, just like everybody else in the world. My Bible reads that in the last days, the, the glory of God's going to appear upon the people of God. And they're going to shine like lights in the midst of darkness. Come on, when, when the plagues came to Egypt, there was no plague in Israel. Come on, somebody. And so God makes a distinction with us. So you and I, what we're filled with determines the kind of life that we're going to live. Uh, in Proverbs 14, it says this. It says that the backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but the good man will be satisfied from above. Here's number five. The fifth thing is, and that is that how hungry you are determines how much you are filled. If I would encourage you, and Rick says this all the time, he gives us the specific things that it's good. If we want to see the glory of God in our life, we want to see miracles and signs and wonders, one of the things he says, you've got to be hungry. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I think in America, we can just get filled up with so many things, but it's a time, I, I like the beginning of the year, we do fast, a lot of churches, a lot of Christians do a time of fasting, and I think, you know, I don't know that fasting changes God, but it does something to us. Amen. Hopefully it makes us hungry for God, hungry that we would be transformed, hungry that we would know God in a greater way, hungry that we would be filled with the things of God. Now, Jesus uh, uh, said this. Uh, he said, blessed are those, in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Come on, somebody. You turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to get filled. Come on. It's time to get filled. Here's the next point, number six. If you don't fill yourself with the things of God, the devil will fill you with his thoughts and his ways. You know, I, um, one of the things I found out about leadership is that wherever there's a leadership void, the devil will fill it. It's time for you and I, we are called to be kings, come on, and, and princess, you know, prince and, prince, prince and princesses of God, we're the children of God. It's time for the people of God to stand up and have a voice in our country once again. Come on. And, uh, but the problem is, you see, we, I think the church has got taken a neutral position. That's a mistake. There's nothing in the Bible that tells us that we're to remain neutral. When we remain neutral, look at this scripture. Let's put it on the screen here. It says, Jesus said this. This is Jesus talking. He said, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. And then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there, and the last state of the man is worse than the first. So it shall be with this wicked generation. Wow, that's intense. And so, you know, when I read that when I was a young Christian, I was like, swept clean and empty. Well, that looks really good. God says, no, it's not good. It's not good enough just to be clean and empty. You got to get filled up. Amen. You gotta, you gotta enact the law of displacement. You gotta fill the void with God. Amen. 
See, too many Christians, well, I got saved, I raised my hand, I asked forgiveness, it's wonderful and all that, but they don't do anything. You see, we have to be proactive about staying filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. See, we got to get filled to the point where there's no room for the things of the devil anymore. There's no room for depression. There's no room for discouragement. There's no room for failure anymore. There's no room uh, to be defeated. Come on, somebody. You know, I've found the difference between victory and defeat is how full I am. When I neglect being filled, then guess what? I start to see things start to happen in my life that I don't like. And I begin to wonder how I got there. And God said, "You, you forgot to get filled up. You gotta stay full. And so I determined, when I began to understand this, I want to be a person that is filled. I went through a period of time, some years back, uh, where I uh, started having panic attacks. I didn't even know what it was. Until I later, somebody figured, told me, I saw something about it. And I would have these panic attacks where I would think something terrible was going to happen to me. And, uh, in fact, I, at that time, we were having two services at our church, and I was speaking, and I woke up that morning, and uh, right away, a voice said to me, this certain guy was coming to church today, and he was going to shoot me. And I kept saying, no, nah, that's not going to happen. But it was so real, I couldn't shake it. And it was really interesting. I have a friend that's a pastor up in the Sacramento area. And every once in a while, he'll send me a text to encourage me. That morning, he sends me a text, don't be afraid. Come on. (laughs) Don't fear anything. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. And so I went to the first service, and I was okay, and I was able to to get through the first service. And then right between the services, that, that, uh, that panic attack came on me again. Well, he didn't come the first service. He's coming the second service. And it just hit me again. And I went through a period of several months, a few months, I should say, where I just kept experiencing things. And I could understand how someone could be schizophrenic. Because even though I told myself these things weren't real, they seemed real to me nonetheless. And they were overpowering at times. And when I look back as to what triggered them, I remember I had, was having a, a heart test or a heart procedure uh, with my cardiologist. And uh, I went into the, to the hospital to get this procedure. And my cardiologist, who's not a Christian, uh, he's, n- he's not my cardiologist anymore. You know, I knocked him off. But anyhow, just, just a joke, just a joke for those of you in the internet. He would always, I'd meet with him and, he, and he'd say, are you doing this, this, and this? I said, well, no. He said, well, do you want to die? I'm like, wow, you're a great doctor. And so before I did this procedure, he did the procedure, he comes in and reads me a list of every terrible thing that could happen to me. Now, this is my cardiologist, and without thinking, I listened to what he said. See, because I wasn't full, and I should have just repelled that. I should have pulled up my shield of faith and said, I'm sorry, doc, but that ain't happening. And I go back and I saw that, I, that that's what triggered these panic attacks in me. And then I looked at it again and it was, I realized I wasn't staying as full as I should be. And so I don't, I'm not going to let that happen again. <laughs> Amen. Come on. All right. So if, if, you, uh, if you don't fill yourself with the things of God, the devil will fill you with his thoughts. Here's number seven. What you set your eyes and thoughts on will fill your life. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Mount, uh, on the Sermon on the Mount, the lamp is the body, the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Therefore, the light that is in you is darkness. How great is that darkness? And so it's what we look at. It's what we think about. You say, well, I can't help myself. Oh, yes, you can. You can determine what you're going to think about. The Bible actually says, as a man thinks, so he is. And so it's what we're looking at. And so if you want to change what you're being filled with, you got to change what you're looking at. Praise God. I recommend this. Praise God. The word of God. Just get, just get it, just take up your time. Just do something crazy uh, and give yourself too much to read so you have to read morning and night. 
and you just won't have time to, you know, to surf the internet and all kinds of garbage that just comes into you. And of course, we got the, we got the pandemic that's coming. Are y'all getting ready for it? No, okay. I recommend Psalms 91. That's the best pill for that situation. And so what you set your eyes on and what you set your thoughts on will fill your life. Here's number eight. What you continually say and speak will fill your life. He tells us in Proverbs 18, verse 20 and 21, it says, For with the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach will be satisfied. He will be satisfied with the product of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Years ago, when I began to learn about the power of our words and how much our words directed the course of our life, according to James uh, chapter 3, it says that your tongue or your mouth is like a rudder of a ship that guides where that ship is going. Well, the good news about that, you're the pilot, you can change the rudder. Amen. So if you, I figured out if I don't like the direction my life's going, I just turn the rudder the direction I want it to go. Now, the, 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 the bigger the turn that you have to make, the longer it takes. It takes time. And so I, many years ago, and now I have multiple lists now, I made what I called I Am Confessions. I wrote out everything that the Bible said about me. And I have several lists of confessions, or today we call them decrees, And I make those decrees on a regular basis. I have one list that just talks about who I am in Christ or what I have in Christ. I have 53 different in Christ statements about my life. And you know what I found? It's just like you get up in the morning, you're going to eat breakfast. The Bible says man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word. Come on, everybody say word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, I know you're taking your vitamins and whatever else you're taking, but I recommend the word of God. And I recommend you say it out loud. Because the more you say it, you listen, you know, say, well, I tried that. I said two verses yesterday and nothing changed. That's not how it works. It works because you got to say it till you believe it. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Come on. And so you got to speak it. And you got to speak it. And you got to speak it. You see, God doesn't do anything without somebody speaking it on the earth. And you can speak over your own life. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm under the blessing of Abraham. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I'm going to live in health and prosper even as my soul prospers. And you just begin to, pretty soon it just starts to get into you. And there's a point where you actually believe it. I actually believe I'm under the blessing of Abraham. I actually believe that I have favors. I have crazy favors surrounding me like a shield. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going to get myself excited here. And so what you continually speak will fill your life. What are you saying? What are you speaking? Come on, especially if you need healing. You know what I recommend? Get all the healing scriptures you can. Write them down. Look them up. Paste them on a piece of paper and begin to say them. The Lord, God said when they came through the Red Sea and they got on the other side, he gave his name. He says, I am the God who is your physician. I am your healer. Come on. He said to Abraham, I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm the God who will supply all your need according to his riches, my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so you and I, we need to speak over our life uh, the things that we want to see our life become. Here's number nine. I'm almost finished here. Just another hour. I'll be done. Just kidding. Number nine, when you're filled to overflowing. Now, this is the law of displacement. When you're filled to overflowing, nothing else can get in. You see, I know it says, I know it says, everybody knows, uh, you know, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll, or everybody knows, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. But we leave off the submit to God. See, it actually says, submit therefore to God. And actually before that, before that it says, and God gives a greater grace. I like those words. I want the greater grace. Anybody here want the greater grace? I want the greater grace. And God gives a greater grace. He resists the proud, but he gives his grace to those that humble themselves. Therefore, submit therefore to God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. And so how do you do that? 
How do you fight off the devil? Well, don't fight him. Just get yourself so full that he just has no place. You see, Jesus, when the devil came to him, he said, you know, the devil is coming to me. Satan is coming to me. Lucifer is coming to me. But he doesn't have any space in me. Amen. You see, you're to be a room with no empty spaces. Come on, somebody. We're to be filled up so full. I just can't even tell you how important it is in this day and this age for you and I to stay full. Come on. Nobody can do it for you. I'd love to come down with a big, you know, bowl of of glory of God and pour it in your mouth. Maybe we'll do that. We'll do it right after the service, right? We can line up at the back. I'm just kidding. But I can't do that. I can't get full for you. I can pray for you. Only you can do it. And you have to be proactive. You have to determine, I'm going to get filled up every day. I'm going to take the time to fill myself up with the things of God. David writes this way. He says, when you're filled to overflowing, nothing else can get in. David says this, Psalms 23. We all know that. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, we've been on this revival thing for a long time. We've been praying for revival. We've been asking for revival. We've been declaring revival. We've been doing all these things about revival. But you don't have to wait for the revival. You see, you know, we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to fall, and he's going to fall. I guarantee it. We're waiting for God to do something. But my Bible says in John chapter 7, Jesus said, Those who believe in me, out of their innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. You see, you know what? Revival starts for you when you let the river flow out of you. Come on, somebody. When you let the, the presence of God, the glory of God, I want the glory. It's real interesting today. I don't, I don't want to get far off here, but it was real interesting today. I was uh, changing my cabin filter on my car. Some of you may not know what that is. It's a little thing that cleans the air inside your car. It's a little filter like, don't oh, forget about it. Anyhow, so I'm sitting there. I've got my glove, glove compartment opened up where I'm going to pull out the filter. And there's a guy walking through my neighborhood uh, hanging out flyers, and he sees me, and he walks over to me, and he says, hey, I hung a flyer on your door. I'm a real estate guy. Uh, I'm just looking to, uh, you know, see if anybody wants to sell their house and everything. I said, oh, that's great, great, yeah. And, uh, and so I was wearing these wristbands that we have here at the Healing Rooms, and we just ordered, by the way, another 1,200 of them. And I uh, stand over here. And uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> And on the wristband, it says, I am God's treasure. So I'm just sitting there, and I'm trying to work on my car, and he's talking to me. And he looks down, and he reads reads it out loud. He goes, I am God's treasure. He said, I go, oh, I'm sorry. Here, this is for you. And so I hand, he says, oh, man, you don't know how much I needed that today. And I said, hey, listen, give me your hand. And then I reached his wallet, got his wallet out of his back pocket. No, I didn't do that. I said, give me your hand. And so I began to pray for his his business. I began to pray for his real estate. I began to pray blessings all over this guy. And he's just like, wah! He goes, healing rooms, I've heard of that. Well, I said, we're having a healing room right now. And so I wasn't trying to do anything. When you just get filled up, the glory of God attracts people to you. Come on, he'll bring them to your house. Come on, they'll be knocking on your door. All right, listen, finally, I just want to end with this. And uh, God wants us, what are the things that God wants us to be filled with? Well, God wants us to be full of faith, according to Acts 6.5. He wants us to be filled with the Spirit, according to Ephesians 5.18. He wants us to be full of good works, according to Acts 9.36. He wants us to be full of the knowledge of his will, according to Colossians. He wants us to be filled with joy, according to 2 Timothy 1.4, and full of light, according to Matthew 6.22, and full of wisdom, according to Colossians 1.9, and full of glory, according to 2 Corinthians 3.18. He wants us to be full of the fruits of righteousness, full of the fire of God. Jesus came to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Somebody say fire. Fire. 
He wants us to be full of praise for God. He wants us to be full of oil. He wants us to be full of the love of God. He wants us to be full of mercy, full of the word of God, and full of the goodness and knowledge of God. Come on, somebody. Can you say thank you, Jesus? All right. Here's, here, just, I want to end with this, and I want to just share a story with you. How do you stay full? That's, thank you for asking, Pastor Fred. How do you stay full? Here it is. Put it on the screen. I'll give you a list of things here. First off, ask God to fill you. Don't get up any day and not ask God to fill you. You see, we have a problem as Christians. We leak. Anybody discover that? Even Jesus leaked. Because the Bible says that virtue would go out of him. Why did he go and wait before the Father? He was, even though he was God, he functioned as a man. So he needed to be refilled with the Spirit on a regular basis. Ask God to fill you. Praise and worship like we did tonight. And thanksgiving will cause us to be filled. Another one that a lot of people don't really do, and that's simply wait on the Lord. Well, how do you do that? You just sit there and wait. That's how you do it. You just sit still. Put your Bible in your lap. Put your phone away. Turn off all the social media and just sit there and just wait on the Lord. The Bible says in, uh, uh, in, about waiting on the Lord in Isaiah 40, 31, it says, They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Be a generous giver. That's another way to be filled. Jesus said, Give and it will be given to you. Press down good measure, running over. Use your gifts and talents. Don't sit on them. The more you use them, the more you'll be refilled. Speak the word. Pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. I just highly recommend that one. I think you just need to have times, whatever it takes. For me, I have to go out and walk. I'll just go walk for an hour or so, and I just walk, and I just pray in the spirit while I'm walking. And so pray in the spirit. Uh, Jude says, pray in the spirit, Building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in the love of God. And then finally, share your faith with others. Now I want to end with this. I want to end with a story. Maybe you, you know, I think one of the things that the church lacks today in a lot of churches in America, and that is people being baptized with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and Jesus said in Acts 1.8, he said this, don't go, but he said, don't go anywhere until you get filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, Acts 1.8, he says, and you shall receive power to be my witnesses. Amen. You shall receive, everybody say, I want to receive power. See, it takes power to serve God. I think it's time that we don't just have a bunch of words. We need to have words matched with power. Amen. And that's what we believe here at the healing rooms. We don't believe that, you know, healing is a good idea. We believe healing is a reality that God has already paid for for us to have. We believe in the power of God, the presence of God, encountering God, knowing God, knowing the manifest presence of God. And so I'm going to just tell you my story. Uh, I did, when I got saved, I got saved on the side of a mountain in Lake Tahoe. I had a radical encounter with God and and uh, I, so I was a new, brand new Christian. I was age 22 years old. And, and, uh, and so I'm just, uh, you know, all on fire for Jesus and so on. And I was working up here in San Jose. I grew up in San Jose, California. And I was working in a construction. I was, we were building a Sears building. And uh, I'm working there. And while I was working there, uh, I had this war going on. And the war was that every time I went to the porta potty, somebody had written words, nasty words, inside the porta potty. I know none of you have ever seen anything like that, but I did. And so I would cross out there, again, I had a marker, I'd cross out their words and I'd write, Praise the Lord Jesus, you know, or something like that. And so I'd go, come back the next day, and they'd crossed out, Praise the Lord, and put in, you know, up your nose with a rubber hose, buddy, you know. And so this thing went on for, Oh, I don't know, several days. <laughs> we were really filling up that porta potty. But anyhow, and, uh, and so one day we were having lunch, and I was sitting there with the other guys in my trade, and these two just big, buff guys with, you know, Fu Manchu mustaches, they come walking my way toward, toward our group, and they go, hey. And we all look at these guys, they go, hey, who's been writing on the 
bathroom wall. And I go, <laughs> and they go, praise the Lord, brother. And they were Christians. And they were all excited. And so we became really good friends. And uh, they, uh, and so we started hanging out. They were from Modesto and Turlock, both of them. And they drove over to San Jose to work on a regular basis. And, and so we hung out. These guys were way older than me and the Lord. And they were pretty mature. And they were just solid in their walk with Jesus. And one day, one of the guys came to work. And he grabs me. He goes, hey, Fred. I go, what? He says, last night I went to this meeting. And I sat in this chair. And they laid hands on me. And I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I spoke in tongues. I had never heard of that. I said, really? He said, yeah. I didn't know what he's talking about. And I said, it, was it for real? Is it real? And he goes, oh, yeah, it's real. I said, well, is it for everybody? He goes, yeah, it's for everybody. And so I said, see you later. And I'm walking away. And I had a wheelbarrow full of metal parts I'm pushing. And I'm mad at God. I'm saying, God, he told me there's something we're supposed to have. And I don't have it. I don't even know what it is, but I want it, and I want it right now. And when I said that, all of a sudden, I began to speak in an Asian dialect, and it just flowed out of me, and I don't know anything about this. I, don't, I never heard speaking in tongues. I didn't even know what he was talking about. And I'm just speaking, and I'm thinking, I can't speak English anymore. And I walked around for 45 minutes trying to figure out how I was going to talk to my supervisor. <laughs> and then I accidentally blurted out a word in English. And I thought, oh, you dummy, you can speak in English. Well, I was excited. I just got baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I spoke in tongues. Whatever that is, I don't know what it is. And so I went to church. It was Wednesday, and church, we had church on Wednesday night. I couldn't wait to get there. And so I went, to, I got to church early because I was waiting for the first people to come to the church so I could tell them that I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And this couple, I'm in the lobby waiting for my first victims, and they, this couple walks into the door. I'm just a baby Christian. I, I'm the first hippie Christian in this church. And, and they come in the door. I said, guess what happened to me today? They go, what? I said, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and I spoke in tongues and they looked at me and they took two steps back and they did this. They said, oh, no, no, that's of the devil. I said, it is? They said, yep, it's of the devil. I said, well, I won't ever do that again. And I didn't for a solid year. And a year later, I had this friend that was a good Christian and he, he said something to me that was just profound. He said, have you ever read the Bible? I said, that's a good idea. I think I'll read the Bible. Well, in this particular denomination that I was in, they were against anything like that and thought it was of the devil. And they would say, if you want to know that speaking in tongues is not, uh, you know, for today, then just read 1 Corinthians 14. So I went to 1 Corinthians 14. And I started reading through 1 Corinthians 14. And it says, he who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks mysteries unto God. I said, yeah, that's bad. That's of the devil. <laughs> then it says, and he who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies or builds himself up. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that. That's bad. That's of the devil. And then I'm reading on down, and it says, and the, this, has been, this is writing by the Apostle Paul, wrote, wrote you know, two-thirds of the, or a third of the New Testament. And the Apostle Paul says, and I speak in tongues more than you all. I thought, oh my gosh, Paul's of the devil more than anybody else. <laughs> and then I read the last verse. Don't forbid to speak in tongues. I said, wait a minute, who's right and who's right? I think the Bible's right. And so I'm back on. I'm a tongue-talking man of God. Come on, somebody. And I've been praying in tongues ever since. Now, some people think, well, that's weird. Well, it's time to get weird, church. How can we do without what God gave as a gift to us to build ourselves up in our most holy faith? Jesus, the Bible, John the Baptist said, Jesus, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. How many of you know we need more fire in the church? 
I believe that. I'm telling you how to get the fire. You got to start the flame. You got to let it burn. You got to pray in the spirit and stir yourself up in your most holy faith. Come on, somebody. And so I want to pray for you in closing. What time is it? It's only 8.30. Okay, we're good. I'm just kidding. It's not 8.30. All right, I'm finished. But I want to pray for you. Maybe you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, how do you do that? Well, let me read what Jesus said to you. Here's what Jesus said. And if you ever want to find out how do I get baptized in the Holy Spirit, go to Luke chapter 11 and look, start reading the words in red where Jesus says in verse 9, so this is Jesus talking. Listen now, if you said, if you went to Jesus, Jesus, could you tell me how to get baptized in the Holy Spirit? And Jesus would say these words to you. So I say to you, Jesus says, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Okay, let me, let's just analyze that verse for a second there. Okay, if you ask what? What's the result? This is not a trick question. It will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Then Jesus said, for everyone, how many are everyone's do we have here tonight? For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. So, is this for everybody? Okay, pop quiz number two. It's for everybody. Everyone who asks receives. And then, well, what if, the big argument that I used to have in the denomination that I was in was, yeah, we kind of believe there is such a thing as baptism in the Holy Spirit, but you got to be careful because you might ask and the devil might give you something. And they would always quote some, that some missionary went to Africa and they were listening to, they were there and somebody, Christian, was speaking in tongues and the witch doctor said, well, they're speaking in, you know, it's of the devil what they're saying. They're saying all these demonic things. And, you know, nobody ever met that missionary, but it was a good story to try to discourage you from believing God. So the question was, if you ask God for something, will he give you the genuine thing? Jesus took care of it right here. He said this, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? And by the way, in the Greek, it answers its own question. If a son asks for bread, uh, let me find it here. For, a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? In the Greek, it says no. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? No. If he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? No. And I was reading that, and I thought, wait a minute. I remember Jesus mentioning serpents and scorpions somewhere else. Yeah, it happens to be in, <laughs> in John where Jesus said this, Behold, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. You will tread upon serpents and scorpions. Come on. So if you ask God for the Holy Spirit, is he going to give you, let you get something weird? The answer is no. He's going to give you the, gen, the, the, the actual thing. And then finally, Jesus then said, If you being evil know how to good give good gifts, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will, there, will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Last third pop question. What do you have to do to get the Holy Spirit? What do you have to do? You just ask him. That's it. That's all I did. I didn't know what I was asking for. I had never heard of it. I just said, God, if there's something we're supposed to have, I know I need it, and I want it right now. Amen. And so that's how simple it is. So I'll stand, and I want to pray for you. Maybe you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, uh, but we want you to receive the Holy Spirit tonight. And all you got to do is ask. And so I want to pray for you because, listen, I don't know how anybody could make it as a believer in this day and age without the Holy Spirit, without the power of the Holy Spirit, without the help of the Holy Spirit, without the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, I'm going to send you the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He's going to be with you. He's going to guide you. He's going to teach you all things. He's going to be your ability and your sufficiency. Come on. So let's all just close our eyes. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Lord, I pray right now. Now, if you will say, you know what? I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then I want you just to pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Let's try it again. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I want everything 
that you have paid for for me to have. And you said you would give the Holy Spirit to everyone who asks. And so I'm asking right now, give me the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Now just receive it right now. Just receive the Holy Spirit. Just receive it. You may get a language right away, you just, but I guarantee if you ask for it, you're going to get it. Come on, somebody. And Lord, I pray that right now. Lord, we want believers that are full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God. It's time for us to stay full in Jesus' name. Can you give God some praise? Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Thank you. That was really good. We need reminders like that. We all need to be filled. Thanks for sharing that. Hey, we have a couple of quick announcements. And one I want to just say before this um, is next Monday night, we have a man who's going to be sharing. His name is Dean Braxton. Some of you may have heard him before. He actually died, I think it was 45 minutes. Is that right? An hour and 45 minutes? Wow. Longer than I thought. Um, documented that he was dead. And while his spirit left his body, he went into heaven and he had some things that the Lord showed him. So he's going to be here next Monday and he's going to tell us some of those things he saw. So I, I love hearing stories of people who have gone to heaven. So, and then we have how many videos? Two videos. And then, so after we show the videos, we need everybody to leave this room because they're going to shut it down and go um, down the hallway to the house of prayer. We'll have a live house of prayer set there. You can wait there or you can wait in the healing room side, but should go to the house of prayer. Healing and miracles are two of the most powerful ways of seeing the power of God demonstrated today. If you live in the area and are interested in becoming a part of our healing rooms team, then our training is for you. The healing rooms of the Santa Maria Valley minister to hundreds of people from our local community, surrounding areas and nations. We offer training to equip those who want to join our team. Are you hungry to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer? Come join us and learn to be activated to minister hope to the hurting and lost. See you there. Do you have children in your life that you'd like to watch grow in God, where they pray for the sick and they actually see God heal right in front of their eyes and you just see their faith explode? Well, we have an amazing opportunity for you. We have Rush and Barbie Hunt who head up Healing Rooms Kids in Kentucky. They're gonna be out here with us on Friday night, February 28th and Saturday morning, February 29th. And they will have so much fun. They'll actually get to pray. They'll get to learn how to hear from God and we'll have some really cool interactive activities. So hope to see you there.